go. Okay, Ashray part two. Okay, so we're gonna do what we usually do, review um, the translations we did. And what I did, I, I mentioned last time, I was gonna look at the Targum. I did look at the Targum and I did it really fast, but I didn't see anything like earth shattering, uh, not a diss on the Targum, but like, uh, but what I did do is I also looked at our Henny Danny altar and he had a couple of nice little uh, translations. So I added that I incorporated them in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you want know to close the door there. Sounds like yeah. Okay. So let's just go review. And I guess what we'll do is because our goal here today, our primary goal today is to figure out our own theory and then maybe start the redoc if we need to. And because Ashray is so long, then I kind of do want to keep it like on the macro um, you know, main idea level. But if you have other questions that um, that come up on the, the the nuances of the wording, we can add them to the list. Okay. Um, I guess we didn't have that big of a list. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess we just talked about it informally, kind of. Our goal right now is to go through what we can come up with basic questions. Uh, basic questions, and then eventually our own uh, our own main idea theory or our own pivot point oh, theory. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. A praise of David, I will exalt you, Hashem. Uh, sorry, I will exalt you, my God, the King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Uh, every day I will bless you and I will laud your name forever and ever. And right, now here comes our first change. Uh, so we tr struggle to eloquently translate I think so. We said. Grace Hashem and exceedingly lauded, and into his greatness there is no investigation. Right. Alter says his greatness cannot be fathomed. Okay, which I I, I liked much better. Um, I, I think it conveys it but much better. Okay, then we also struggle with this next possible door lid door yeshabach ma'asecha. So we said like uh, sorry uvurasecha uh, yagido. Um, so. We said generation to generation will praise your actions, but he, Alter says one generation will praise your actions to the next. I think that, that that's better because it captures the each and every generation, but then the Lamed was what was bothering me last time. Um, and uh, uh, and your mighty deeds, they will tell. Five, Hadar Kavod Hodecha Vdivre Niflo Sacha Asicha. We again took stabs at like, those three synonyms. Alter had his own thing, but I didn't really care about it. The majestic glory of your grandeur and words of your wonders I will discuss. Six, the Azuz Nora Osecha Yomeru Ubdulascha Asaprena, and the power of your awesome deeds they will declare, and your greatness I will recount. Seven, the oh, sorry, Zecher Rav Tuvacha Yabiu Vitikasacha Yorenenu, a recollection of your abundant goodness they will express, and they will sing of your righteousness. Eight, Hanun uh, uh, gracious and merciful is Hashem, slow to anger and abundant in kindness. Tov Hashem is good to all, and His mercies are on all His works or on all His creations. I think we said uh, the article said that, and Alter said also creatures. Okay, I still like works because it's broader. Um, uh, Yoducha. Yeah, right. Yoducha Adonai Kol Masacha Vachasidecha Yivarchucha. Um, all your works will gratefully acknowledge you, Hashem, and your. We translate Chasidach as your extra righteous ones will bless you. Eleven, Kavod Malchuscha Yomeru Uvurascha Yedaberu, the glory of your kingship they will declare, and of your might they will speak. Twelve, Lahodia Livnei Hadam Kavurosa Uchavod Hadar Malchuso, to make known to my, to mankind his mighty deeds and the glory of the majesty of his kingship. Thirteen. Um, uh, your kingship is the kingship of all eternities and your dominion is in every generation. 14. Uh, Hashem supports all the fallen uh, and strains all the bent. 15. Uh, your all eyes look toward you with hope and you give to them food and it's time. Uh, you open your hand and satisfy the will or the desire of every living thing. 17. Uh, Hashem is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his actions. 18. Uh, Hashem is close to all who call to him, to all call him in truth. 19. Um, 
the will or desire of those who fear him, he will do, and their outcry, he, he will hear and save them. 20, Shomer Adonai Eskol Ahavave Eskol Hashem Yashmid. Hashem will protect all his loved ones and all the wicked he will annihilate. And then 21, Tihilas Adonai Dabar Pivi Berech Kol Bazar Shem Kacho Lomaed. The praise of Hashem, my mouth will speak, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. And we mentioned last time, Vanachnun Devarach Yavim Atavid Alam is not part of the Mizmor. We didn't determine where that was from. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Oh, you time, did? But I forgot. All right. Uh, That's good. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So the what we, okay, that, that is good to know, though. Uh, that'd be very problematic. If it wasn't from Dylan. Okay. So what we have here is we, at the very end, when we were trying to identify the pivot point, realized that there are two themes. Okay. Uh, or two broad, like, yeah, two broad themes. Okay. And we represented them in, uh, in these two colors. So rather than me stating like, how I would uh, characterize it. Let's just take a moment and just think about it fresh. Um, first of all, let's see if we still agree with this. I mean, I think it was pretty uh, clear last time, but see how we would characterize, how you define the yellow theme and how you define the blue theme. Yeah. I guess I would say the, the yellow theme is- Actually, you know what? Let's yeah. just take a little while to think about it for a second. Sure. Yeah, I, I just want to think about it fresh also. Yeah, what do you want to say? The other thing it seems to be like some situation where people and David will it's like stating that people will praise Hashem, mm -hmm. will state praises of Hashem. Yeah. And the yellow blue theme is praises of Hashem. It's okay. Qualities of Hashem. Right. Okay. So I think that's a good starting point. All right, Yosef, what do you want to, what do you want to say? Uh, maybe it's like it's how we engage in like understanding of God versus um, how God. Us. Okay, that's another good way to frame it. Okay, how we understand God and how God interacts with us. Um, I wanted to go similarly to what Isaiah was saying, but uh, there's always a danger. You don't know how specific or how broad to go. Yeah. I wanted to say that um, to me, it's not just praising God. It seems to be the emphasis on the, like, the, uh, I don't know what the word, uh, not excess, but like, I mean, maybe excess is the right word, but like the excessive praise that god warrants you know um like i think in every pasuk it has that right so you have the um uh forever and ever every day exceedingly lauded greatness can be fathomed right. uh one generation to the next um uh majestic glory of your grandeur that's a little bit uh not as clear as the other ones but in terms of the like um it's the the great quality of the great quality of the great right. thing right it's just like you know it's like uh, multiple adjectives um in sequence um uh power of your awesome deeds okay that one's just generic phrase recollection of your abundant kindness that will express and sing of your righteousness okay that's more generic um the fact that 10 all your works are are gratefully acknowledging you and the chasidim are doing even more uh glory of your kingdom uh glory of the majesty and then at the end also uh all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever you know yeah. so it's not just so let's say for example in contrast to Tilim 150 which is also about praise, but if you look at 150, just to refresh our memory here. Um, was it advertising a bicycle for Tim? Okay, yeah, right. So like this one, this is clearly about praise, but there's no mention of excess or like, I'm gonna max out. Like that, that's really the thing is I'm maxing out praise. Like God warrants a maxing out of praise, you know? Right. So um, yeah. Um, all right. That was all I was gonna say. Yeah. I guess I think that is I see what you're saying about the yellow. Part, yeah. But I think also a major theme is that like this is a thing that will happen. Right. Like every statement is like the these people will praise Hashem. Right. They will. I will. It's all about something, a future state or event. Or yes, that is like a good that. point. Right. Um. We uh, we uh, I, I'll I'll say that um. I'll just mention this, even though I think you're right, I'm just gonna mention this for methodological purposes. Uh, we have said that in Tehillim, whenever it uses the future tense, it could either mean will, or it can mean like, it could be a bakasha. Like, like let's say for example, Yoducha Hashem Kol Ma'asecha, 
um, uh, either be uh, all your cre creations will acknowledge you or may all your creations acknowledge you. But I think, I happen to think you're right, that it seems to fit in better saying that it will happen. Yeah. yeah. And that fits into the theme that we've said from 146 through 150, which is that that these seem to be about Yimosa Mashiach later on. Right. Okay. So now the question is like this. I think that's good enough for, for our first, uh, first uh, swooping in. Okay. Second thing now is how do we unify the two halves? And just to refresh our memories in terms of the approach here, just like in Mishle, you tend to have two halves of the Pasuk. And then if they're incongruous, the goal is to figure out a main idea such that they are, you know, um, you know, two opposites within one subject. Now here it's not opposites, but what is the unifying idea of excessive praises of God? And then this, description of God's attributes. And I think in order to answer that, I think maybe we also have to like scrutinize what types of attributes is it saying? Because, uh, you know, God has, I mean, he doesn't have any attributes, but there are lots of things that you can attribute to him, you know? Um, and uh, these seem to be a, um, what do you call it? A, uh, uh, of a certain like flavor. Also, you know, it does kind of bother me that you got the blue right in here. Yeah, you know, like it would be, you know, we, we've had Prakim where it's like every other thing is, a, is, is like it's switching off. That's what I call like the Venetian blind yeah. um, Prakim. This is like predominantly oh. praise of God, seeming like you're transitioning, then going back and then going full on into the uh, the thing. So if so, it's there possible. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is that is there is there something in here that either this is its own theme, or? I will. These are different, yeah. I mean, eight and nine, they are about like Rachamim. Yeah. And Chesed. Um, other ones, not specifically about that. Uh, let me ask this Is it possible? Does anything in one through seven talk about God's specific relationship to his creations? And this might maybe it was planted in my head by Yosef, <laughs> right? So one is David to God, two or people to God, two is people to God, three is about God himself, right? We know, know that it changes to be passive. Four is people to God. Five is people to God. Six is people to God. Seven is people to God. Right. And then eight begins a switch of God's Midos, which, which again is going to be in terms of how he acts, Nine says how he acts to his cre creations. Ten maybe now is a, see, I was going to pull a move here that 10 is a, if you take Yoducha as like Hoda'a, then that is not just praise of God's qualities and abstract, but that's praise based on how God relates to us, like an interaction. Let's try this out. 11 is now talking about God's Malchus, and 12 is talking about God's Malchus. So what I'm wondering is like, can we make this its own, like, um, let's just toy with it here like this, its own like transition theme. Oh, I thought, yeah. Yeah? I thought what you were gonna say is that like maybe 10, 10 would go back on the, the blue section we had before, mm -hmm. but then 11 and 12 would like begin the next blue section. Uh -huh. Interesting. Hold on. So what, great, what did we translate? As intend for gratefully, what, what uh, Yoducha for like Hoda. Oh. Yeah, Yoducha Shem Koma Saka. Maybe it's like what you were saying, like they're giving, like they're like appreciating the compassion, right? The right, Shem shows to them. right. In other words, like 140, uh, sorry, one through seven, like you know, Einstein could say one through seven, a deist could say one through right. seven, and there would be nothing like, um, you know, uh, contradictory to his uh, his view. But once you start getting into eight and nine, that really starts talking about Hashgacha, you right. know, and man's interaction with God and God reigning as king, you know. Mm -hmm. Then I think 11 and 12 were more coming, I don't know, this is just descriptive, but they're like yeah. coming from our perspective of like awe or like, you know. Sorry, which numbers? 11 and 12. 11 and 12. And, and then it's like talking about Shem's kingship and their awe of his kingship, the glory of his kingship. Yeah. Like, instead of a grateful tone, it's like a, right. you know, now it's like- Rulership, like, menshala. Yeah. 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 And then, and then it switches back to like 14 and 15 and 16 and 17 and 18. 
and 19 and 20 <laughs> all sound like they're more in the line in line with the um with eight and nine right expanding on the all the blue really kind of seems to be expanding on hashem's gracious graciousness uh and goodness whereas like you were saying like the um 12 and 13 seem to be more about his rulership you know yeah this part's dicey in the middle because I, I, it does. It, uh, every time I, I think about it, it does. It does feel more like that. So l- let's do this. I think maybe if we try to figure out how to unify, uh, like what the the main idea is, mm-hmm. maybe that will give us more insight into what to do with the middle. Right. So like yeah. One thing that we did here is we categorized it in terms of like um, action in some way. Yeah. Or like people doing something, and then it's Hashem subscription. But there's also like a different layer of like. There's like the chesed versus justice category. I feel like those are not justice, but like, you know, a din versus right. Rahman type of yeah. qualities that are both expressed. So is the only din that you're talking about the, the, the Malchus and Mimshala thing? Or, maybe, or are yeah, there other maybe, examples? You know, maybe that is all that. All yeah. Because what I'm wondering is it's possible. I mean, I guess there's also aspects of din in the um, in the emphasis on uh, strength and power and gvura. We noticed that there was a lot of gvura last time, right? Oh, we let, let's just do that. We we didn't actually highlight this. Yeah. Um, uh, we noticed certain common phrases, right? So the um, uh, well, okay, let's malchus and malchus and malchus, um, and then we have. Um, uh gvura i feel like there were a bunch of gvuras up here um i don't know if it's going to matter but just uh gvur sahia gidu um uh weren't there like a three there's two i think we saw three and then gvura sav okay and then we have um uh gdula gdula sakha and there was the singular gdula sakha Somewhere around here. Oh, Gadol. Ligdulaso in Feker, right. Ligdulaso in Feker. Um, there's another. Oh, no, I was thinking Gvurasa. Yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, I, I don't know if this really matters. Uh, and then we notice Bracha. Oh, here comes the ugly color. Hmm. Bracha, Yvarhucha. And there's the Hasidim also bless him, right? Um, Where's the Hasidim? Oh, Hasidim, I got that one right, actually. Yeah. Oh, Ugdal Hasid, that's another. Uh, I mean, I know that's in Hasid, but yeah. Oops. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know if this matters. Uh, oh, and then Tzedek is another one. Uh, let's do another uh, ugly color. Just gonna, we're going to run out of colors here. Tzedekasacha, and then Tzadik Hashem Bechol Derachav. Um, oh, then there's another, I found another bracha. Uh, what color is bracha? Oh, the pink. Vivarach kol basar shem Uh, yeah, you know what? I think actually chesed is the other one. Chasid b'chol masav and then g'dal chesed. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know if that matters. Okay, but our main question is how to unify these. What's the main idea? And you can either go from the general to the specific or the specific to the general, meaning you could either start off with just the most basic idea of praise and then midos of the Kaddish Baruch Hu, which, Yosef, say what you were, if you're still there, say what you were saying uh, again when, when we were uh, trying to find the themes. Oh, you're not still there. Okay, <laughs> hard to say that. I think, I mean, he was saying how God, how we relate to God and how God relates to us, I think. Okay, can I say the first thing that comes to mind? This is not like a full idea, but just a very basic idea here that um, the only way we can know God is through his actions, right? Mm-hmm. So um, so that's one reason why you would transition from talking about praising God into talking about his actions, because that is the content of your praise, okay? But at the same time, maybe this is another theme that the other reason why we talk about God's actions 
is because the halacha de bidracha, that we emulate God's actions, and then that makes us favorable to him and makes us worthy of his hashgacha. And that really we get to at the end, which is that, uh, excuse me, that um, Hashem is close to all, okay, well, that one, I don't know how to feel if it's in, oh, Ratzon Yurev Yasev Es Shavas Amishmo Biyoshim, Shomer Hashem Es Kol Ohavav Es Kol Harashayim Yashmid, that basically those who praise God will do so through his actions. Those who involve themselves in the study of his actions will come to emulate him. And those who emulate him will be the recipients of his, his goodness and his favor. And those who don't will be destroyed. And if you contextualize this in terms of Yom Yom Mashiach, so then this is gonna ultimately come about at the time of Mashiach, which we've talked about in all those other problems. Yeah. I don't know if that's too elementary, but uh, that's the first thing that comes to my mind. And, and again, it's like, um, I know I've mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, that in the uh, the machlokus uh, uh, in our rabbim on how to define a machlokus, right? Then the, you had the uh, the three way machlokus that from when I asked my rabbim my first year of yeshiva, Rabbi Man said start with the side that is the easiest mm -hmm. because your mind is already working that way and just even if it sounds obvious, just articulate what you're thinking and flesh out get your intuition out onto the table. Then you had Rabbi Moskowitz who said no davka don't start off with the side that's the easiest, because since your mind is already thinking that way, if you lean into that, you're not going to be able to break out of the box, right. start with the more difficult side. And then when I asked Rabbi Chait, he said, I hold that there's no rules when it comes to thinking, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and you shouldn't uh, force your mind to go in, in one regimented way, uh, either, either way. Yeah. I noticed that in the blue sections, it's all like, um, present tense. Yeah. For, oh, that's a good point. Except for uh, one part of it. Oh, sorry, let me do one English. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, 19. 19. Uh, he will do, right. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, yeah, I said, right. Yeah, there's no way to say and it. That, and that's like, he'll relate to people in this way in the future. Right. And those who call upon him, he'll, he'll like, or not. Oh, that's also future, he'll, right? He'll fulfill their desires. Fears. Yeah, that's also future though, right? Is the um, Hashem's, uh, no, that's oh no, that's for the people though. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were agreeing with his idea. <laughs> I know. No, it was just me. It was just like slowly. We were in the pulse scene to all, so we just went double check uh, our okay. scroll, and no translation was right. All right. Um. Yeah. Is there anything else we can get from this before we go to the Farshim? Man, that middle really bothers me. I did kind of think of like this is. I guess when I first saw this, I was yeah. thinking like maybe what this is saying is the yellow is talking about like how people will relate to Hashem in the future. Mm -hmm. um, mm. But the blue is talking about like they will like, they will state praises and 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 speak of Hashem and and know Him. And the blue is kind of like listing what they will know. Okay, what so they will state. this actually is a good route because uh, we did say we noted that it was in future tense and that this whole thing is about Yemos Mashiach. So this is describing a future state in which the main involvement, well, we know the main involvement of the world is going to be knowledge of God, but the highest level of knowledge of God we saw from all the other problem of Sukkot de Zimra is not just knowing it, but fully involving yourself in the seeking of the knowledge and in the expression of it in a way that affects your entire being. So that's, this could all be a description of the Yemos Mashiach. I think blue would be like, the, he's kind of giving you like, categories of the knowledge that they will talk about yeah that they will know right yeah it's weird though because i mean I, the idea is fine and uh, it is good in terms of, uh, of like a, a a theory uh but i feel oh you know okay i'm gonna say what i was gonna what my objection was gonna be and then i have an answer to my objection mm -hmm. i was gonna object and say the praises that is, is talking that's talking about in 13 through um through 20 or like 13 through 16 mm -hmm. or 17 don't sound like praises of events of Yemos Mashiach. Like usually there we think about, let's say like all the stuff in Hallel of, you know, Hashem overthrowing our enemies or Hashem redeeming the people, you know, yeah. but you want to respond to that? Well, that's not, that's not what they're going to, that's yeah. not what they're going to be learning. In exactly. Right. So in other words, it's exactly the opposite is, right. is because in the time of Mashiach, there's going to be peace and knowledge of God. Then they can focus on the everyday stuff. Right. That is universally true. That uh, you know, like Pesach, etc. Yeah, Dark Hashem, right? Okay, that's good. Okay, 
So I'm content with this as a working theory for ourselves. I know it's not like the most sharpened, polished idea, mm -hmm. but I think we have enough material now to go into the Mufarshim, unless anyone else wants to say anything. I'm sorry, could you, could you summarize what you think the, the uh, working principle is here? Yeah. Of so I, I'm gonna say it the way I said it first, because I think that stands on, on its own. And then Isaiah is taking a second step, which is consistent with it. I was saying how, uh, the yellow theme is um, is basically the fact that we are that God is worthy of excessive praise, but the only way we can praise God is to know Him. The only way we can know Him is to know is through His actions, and therefore we praise His actions. But then by praising His actions, we emulate Him, and that's why He relates to us by doing our uh, our desire by like fulfilling our will. So like the sequence is is praising, praising God's actions. And then it actually states the actions, the content of that praise. And then it states the result of that, which is that, that God will do our will and respond to our tefillos and destroy the people who don't do that. Mm -hmm. And then Isaiah added the point that when is this talking about? This is talking about in the future, which is the time of Mashiach, when that the entire earth will be filled with the knowledge of God, like water that covers the seabed. And that's why the types of praises that we're going to be in, uh, in, involved in here are recognition of just how God runs the world. You know, his malchus and his tzedek and, his, and you know, these, uh, the dark Hashem in general. If you need a more concise, I could try more concise. No, no. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's do, um, let's roll the dice. Oh, lands on the dock. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I, uh, uh, I, in the eerie, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. Also, I'm just kind of more in the mood for, for the Redoc today. Okay. And I'm going to make my same announcement that I make every time uh, that the Redoc in the standard Mikroskodolos and even online is woefully lacking. Uh, it's missing words and it's missing sentences. Uh, so that's why I'm using the Taurus Chaim. Okay. So he starts off with a Hakdama. All right. So this, I, I, I mentioned we're going to just focus on this learning this the way we usually do without going through Chazal, but he quotes Chazal, so we'll, we'll take, we'll follow his lead. Okay, Tila um, Okay, here we go. Ele shisha hamizmorim ad sofa sefer him kulam tehilos hakel yisbarach ushvachal. The six, these six Psalms until the end of the book, all of them are praises of God, blessed is he, and his Shavach. I don't know what the difference between Tehila and Shavach is. Lefikach, therefore, Hechel behem betehila, umashlin behem betehila. Therefore, it begins with Tehila, so that's Tehila the David, and ends with Tehila. And what is the ending with Tehila? It's the last puzzle is Kol Hanishma Tehalel Ga. I, I never noticed that, yeah. Legodel uh, Hatila. Now, I don't know if Legodel Tehila means to magnify or like on account of the greatness of the, of the praise. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but he's saying that it's a it's a unit. It's bracketed by Tila, which is interesting because you know I, we raised the question on Tuesday that um, this is the only one that starts off with Tila, but it could be that it's not that the word Tila is special. It's that like in other words, it's not that this is a specific kind of praise. It's really that that the David Melech wants to identify these last six as like especially like a special praise. And so he just has to use a different word than, than he usually uses. I mean, it could also be that he's identified and uses like the acre of the book. That could be also right. And that fits in with my question that I said, why do we call the whole thing Tehillim if there's only one that starts off like that? Yeah. So the other thing I think it's fair to say is that you do treat it as though each one is Tehillah Ladavid because he's saying that the Tehillah extends to all six. So Asher is not really the only one. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Zam is more... Uh, and this pasuk, tehila sa pasuk harishon tehila, or tehila sa pasuk achron tehila. Oh, maybe I was wrong. This one specific mizmor, the beginning of the, uh, of it is tehila, and the end is tehila. That's what we noticed last time, right? Tehila sa shem yudaber pi, right? So this one, so in other words, like this, you've got sefer tehillim. These six are the tehila ones, and of the six tehila ones, this one forty five is the tehila of the tehila ones. Yeah. Yeah. What does he say? And the other five start and end with Haleluka, uh, all for the aggrandizement of Tila, right? Yeah. And we said that, um, I don't know if we did the Redox Shita on Haleluka, but uh, um, I would say, you know, based on, we, you know, we had our basic Machlokas of whether it means Haleluka, praise God, or where, whether uh, the Yudhe is a magnifier, which just means lots of praise, 
or like great praise. Sounds like he's trending in that direction, that it's just great praise, right. you know? All right. Umasai tie tila sakel gadola. When will the greatness, uh, the, sorry, the praise of God be great? Bikibut galios uh, at the in gathering of exiles. Shiyiru kol ha'am haniflau shiase im Yisrael. I think kol ha'am here, I don't know if that means like all people. I don't think it means all of Kla Yisrael, because that'd be weird if he said all of them will see the niflaus that he does with Am Yisrael. But basically, the, the, the wonders will be evident. That's why it mentions in them Kibbutz Galios and Binyan Yushlaim. Clearly, he's not talking about our parak. He's talking about later on in, in the cluster. All right. So that is his theory about, you know, the six. And again, since we've been doing the other ones, we don't really need to dwell on that. Uh, you know, we, we saw that in the other ones. Okay. Now he gets off. Yeah. Sure, sure. Is that to be saying that these six are also not just the Tehila ones, but there's also some sort of like, these are wrapping up the other prior 145 in like a certain like focus of what all these first 145 have been going to? Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's interesting. We, we theorize that 150 does that. And we also theorize, we also, you know, that's a good question. You know, it's hard for me to say based on firsthand knowledge, because I haven't done the other 144, <laughs> you know, but like, I think it's, it is reasonable to assume that like, you know, all the stuff that David writes, you know, we said that there's basically three categories of Tehillim, uh, that there's biographical ones about David Hamalek himself and his personal struggles. Then there's ones about uh, Am Yisrael historically mm -hmm. or in the future, stuff that they go through. And then there's abstract ideas about God. It does stand to reason that all of these things will culminate in Yimos Mashiach. Machus based David is going to reach its culmination in Mashiach ben David. Kla Yisrael's destiny is going to culminate in, in, in Kibbutz Galios and keeping the Torah. And then our greatest ability to praise God will occur in the time of Mashiach. So yeah, you could say that. Uh, is he saying that? I don't know if he's saying that, but you could say that. And that would be a true idea. Yeah. Okay. You're entitled to say stuff too. Vahamizmor hazeh hu kulo yitihila sakel yisbarach. This mizmor is entirely praises of God. Lefika Hebrew the Aleph base. Therefore, it is composed with the Aleph base. Uh, I just want to see footnote three. Where is that? Where does that say? Footnote three. Reila el Chafhe Aleph Kufiud Aleph Aleph Shabe Mizmor Shenemar Aleph base Yishnam Dvarim Nechbadim. Okay, I'm going to violate the principle I just said, which is I'm going to look at the Babradoc because uh, um, I, I didn't bring my Torah climb for all of these. Um, just to see what he says about Aleph Beis. So he says here in Chaf Beis, this is, is this one we're familiar with? No, or at least I'm not familiar with this one. L'david, zem is more nemar ba Aleph Beis, v'chein yish achirim b'sefer kamohu. So this one is, I guess, the first with Aleph Beis, and there are others like it. V'yish os achas perosh kol pasuk, there is one letter at the beginning of every pasuk, v'yish ne psukim ba os achas, and then there are two psukim with one letter. V'yish be pasuk echad shte osios, and then there are other pasukim that have two letters. Okay, fine. So it's not like Dav got one pasuk per letter. V'lo noda etzleno mipnei ma be'elu yoser mi ba'acher. Okay, we don't know why he varies it. Okay, that's poetry for you. Ela im kein is damilo b'thiv beruach hakodesh. Okay, maybe it's just like he was inspired by ruach hakodesh. V'yir e shekol mizmor shenemar ba'alf beis l'fi godlo l'fi hadvarim hanechbarim hanemarim bo. Nemar came. Ah, so this is the principle. He's saying anytime you see a mizmor with aleph base, it means that there are great things and important ideas in it. Okay, so that's different. Oh, so v'hine in bo beis barosh pasuk v'lo vav v'lo kuf yishbo reish de pamim. That's funny. So speaking of things that are uh, uh, incongruous, right? In, in Ashrei, there's no nun. In this one, he's saying there's no base at the beginning of a pasuk and there's no vav at all, right? Skips vav and there's no kuf. And there's Raish twice, <laughs> right? So you see, he's not bothered by those questions, right? right? right. Um, sure. Yeah, uh, let's just look at his other one. What was the other one that I mentioned? Uh, Kuf, uh, no. What footnote was that? Three. Three. Oh, thanks. Kuf Yud Aleph. Um, Kuf Yud Aleph. Hamizmar Zen Nemar Ba Aleph Beis, Shte Osios Papasak Echad. Two letters in each possible. And then the last one, there's three. Because this is a short Mizmor. Yeah, it's 10. Um, oh, this is a very uh, weighty Mizmor. Um, which one is this? 
Hallelujah, Ode Adonai B'chol Levav, Besod Yishayim Veda. I don't know this one either. Yeah, you know, I guess the side commentary here. I, I feel like there, this is one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to teach uh, and learn Tehillim. Um, and I, I don't know if you remember this. Last year, I did endeavor to do Ms. Mormon that we don't say regularly. And the reason why is because, like, you see from here, there's so many, like, things that have important ideas. It's just that they didn't make it into the New South Fila. So like, but this is, you know, the book about praising God and having a relationship with God. And like, we just don't know that these things exist, you know, and then I, I eventually switched to stuff we say, cause you know, it's fun. Um, but maybe we could do this in the future. So it's talking about um, contemplating God's actions and remembering constantly his wonders and the strength of his might. Says you should be involved in fear of God and Chachma. That sounds great. Okay, so same, same principle here. So he's saying something different than what we said. Uh, we said when we did, um, maybe we didn't say this. Have we done to your recollection, an, an alphabetical one before? No, no. So maybe I said this in, um, I think I might've said this in my keynote year, uh, or keynote year and that my understanding of an olive base. And I, I think I heard this from Rabbi Chait or from the Rav or from Rabbi Chait in the name of the Rav is that like, whenever you're dealing with a subject that is like infinitely deep or infinitely broad and there's no way to say all of them, then what you do is you basically use every letter of the alphabet to show that you're basically like using all the tools at your disposal. So with Kinos, a lot of them are, are uh, alphabetical and that's like, there are so many tragedies that if we you know, uh, you know, like it says a lot in Eicha uh, and Yumiyahu, like, like, it, you know, Yumiyahu says, if my head were made of water, then I couldn't cry enough to, uh, to, to shed all the tears for all the bad things that happened to my people, you know? So like, since we can't cry infinitely, then we, we like use every color in our palette mm -hmm. to depict the tragedies. And by praises of God, what I said is since the praises of God are infinite, then the best we could do is like use every building block in the language that we, we you know we praise God in language, so we use every building block of the language uh, to do that. You know, mm -hmm. so he uh, that's not a contradiction to his idea, but he's saying that like it's just a whenever you see alphabetical, it's a clue that there are important ideas here, and it's not like I guess my idea is more is focusing on the idea of like fully exhausting the subject matter. Right. His has to do with the quality of the ideas or the importance of the ideas. Yeah. I guess I think with this one, maybe that your idea doesn't apply to this one. It doesn't seem to be like a list or like one correct subject matter that yeah like we're correct saying should extend into it. yeah you're right. This Obviously, is good disprove mine. Here are very deep, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't say disprove. This is a good um, uh, uh, it, yeah. I mean, this one does not fit my rule. It could be that there are other uses of acrostic alphabet that that that, that do that. Yeah. Okay, then he says my favorite thing, right? So the question was raised, why is there no nun? So he says, Velohi Robo os nun, Velo Yadana Lama. <laughs> okay, he says that it doesn't have a nun and I don't, we don't know why. Okay, and then he says, But Darshu Rabbi Saint Azal, Chazal Darshan, and I think it's important to say this because I think, you know, people evidently from Chaim Zivkin, you know, from when he, when he was here, uh, you know, he was aware of the Gemara, okay, and I'm going to disprove him in a second. Um, I think people think that the Gemara is explaining why there's no nun. He's not viewing it as an explanation. He's viewing it as a drasha. And the difference is explanation is the reason. And he's saying, we don't know the reason, but a drasha, you can, you can darshan however much you want. So he says like this, why is there no nun written? Because it alludes to literally it contains the downfall of Israel. Sone uh, Israel means the enemies of Israel, but that's a euphemism. It means our downfall. Dixiv, as it says, nafla velotosif kum besulas Yisrael. Um, that the the uh, the the maiden or the virgin of Israel uh, fell and will no longer get up, etc. Okay, now I I bet Chaim a uh, hundred dollars. He didn't take the bet. I bet him a hundred dollars. He said that there used to be sorry that there is a real nun pasuk, but it's but we take it out. I think he was making a mistake and thinking of this. That the Gemara mentions a pasuk, but it's not a pasuk in Tehillim. It's a pasuk in Amos. 
you know? Yeah. So if, if we made the bet, then he'd give me a hundred dollars, but uh, uh, he, didn't, he didn't agree. Okay. Um, fine. So the, that yeah. Saying here that, that, that David is, David didn't teach the noon. It does teach us something. He did teach us something by not doing that. Um, see, I, it depends on how you learn drushes, right? If you right? didn't give the, if you did put it in Boston, if yeah. you said something else, then we wouldn't have been able to do, be Dore. Right. But that's not, so I, I this kind of has to do with like the theory of drasha. Uh, and, you know, as we've talked about a lot, um, you know, I hold like the vast majority of Rishonim and Gonim that drushos are ideas that Hazal are attaching to the Pesukim, um, irrespective of the author's intent. So, so I think the Radak is saying, we have no idea why David did this, but the question is, what are we going to do with it? Like, you can't read Ashrei with a clear mind and not notice that there's no none. So when that stands out, what idea are you going to associate to? Mm -hmm. So the idea you're going to associate to is, the, um, is this idea that we don't want to talk about the downfall of Israel. And in fact, I think we could fit this into his theory about what the Mizmor is about of Kibbutz Galius, right? Why would it be appropriate... Like, in other words, this idea of Nun alludes to the downfall of Israel that says Israel will fall and never get up again. Mm -hmm. So why would that be missing from this parak? Because this is talking about when Israel gets up again. Exactly. When, it's talking about when Israel gets up, but not just gets up, but gets up and is permanently established. You know, so it, it's a, see, I, when I read this Gemara, you know, I thought it was like, we don't want to say anything that will cause us to think uh, that about something bad in relation to Israel. I think what I just said now, you know, fits into the actual theme. So when you notice the missing known, you're like, why is there no known here? Oh, because Nimos Mashiach, we will not fall and we will be permanently established. So we're 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 omitting a puzzle that that uh reminds us of Nifilas Israel, you know. So I think that fits it in. That's a question so on that. Yeah. Yeah. So it just seems to then at least these two things seem to be completely contradictory ideas in that either we are going to get back up or we're not. And you seem to be, unless there would be, you could maybe try to fit them together insofar as there would be like an incompletion in our getting up, which I don't even know if that would be true. But these do seem to be at the very least as a whole contrary three ideas. Okay, so in order to answer that, which is taking us a little bit far afield, but the question is interesting enough that I want to like look into it. Um, oh, you know what? I always do this. I station my Tanakh here and then I put it back. Mm. Yeah, I got my Tanakh. Uh, <laughs> Not, not do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Can you say, can you say the almost box is talking about before you must be Yeah. So what I want to do is I want to look at it in context. Uh, that was my suspicion. Let's look at it in context and then see if if the um. Well, here's the reason you can't say it's before you must be Shiach, like unqualified because it says that they won't get up again. Right. So. They won't get up. Shem could raise them. Ah, okay. So you know, this is this is the type of qualification I want to see. Okay, what is it? Uh, five two. So hopefully this is the beginning of the parak. Uh, you know the uh, <laughs> the the dumb uh, way to remember the order of Treasar. Uh, no, but Shai Horowitz. So he says it's hoyo am oyo mina chaza mina chata chazama. It's a nonsense <laughs> phrase, but it sticks in your head. Yeah. So am oyo. So it's a, it's a, on page thirteen sixty. Uh, sorry, 1360. Yep. Okay, so I mean, we're not going to dwell on Amos here, but uh, yeah. just to just to see if we can answer it on the service. Shimu es hadavar hazeh asher anochi nosei aleichem kina beis Yisrael. So this is a kina. This is a lamentation. Um, oh, so this might be interesting already. Hold on. Any, does anyone know anything about Amos? Because I don't. Nope. Yeah. Oh, what happened to everyone? Did we just lose like several people in one shot? Was that just a coincidence? Okay, I don't know. Yeah, Dub is there. Yeah, I'm still alive. Yeah, you're, you're there. I don't know what happened. Um, Nafla Yisrael, I guess. Um, uh, it's. I wonder if he's talking about like Mahus Yisrael specifically, as was Mahus Yehuda, because they, you know, uh, let me just see really quickly timeline. Um, I have a timeline of Malachim that I made. Let me just look on my Malachim folder. Um, um, I don't know where to put it. Rise up over. Yeah. Yeah, right. So here's the pronouncement that I will recite over you in Lamentation of House of Israel. 
Yeah, yeah, let's, let's just read it in English because we're not gonna uh, go on this. She has fallen and will no longer rise, virgin of Israel. She has been abandoned upon her soil with no one to lift her up. For thus said the Lord, Hashem Elohim, the city from which a thousand people go forth will be left with a hundred, and one from which a hundred people go forth will be left with uh, ten of the house of Israel. Um, for thus said Hashem to the house of Israel, seek me and live. Do not seek Beth, Beis El and do not go to Gilgal and do not traverse Beersheba, for Gilgal will be completely exiled and Beis El will become nothingness. Seek Hashem and live, lest he burn through the house of Joseph like a fire and consume Beis El with none to extinguish it. I think this is about Malchus Israel because yeah. Beis Yosef is referring to um, Shevet Ephraim and the kings of of Yisrael were mostly from Shevet Ephraim. Mm -hmm. um, I just have to see if Amos himself was prophesying to the Northern Kingdom. I'm just looking at the art scroll intro. Yeah. Uh, contemporary of Alicia. Does it say where? Okay, uh, yeah, I, I don't know enough. I, I, I do hear that the, the Gemara in Brachos will be Re, re, uh, oh, punctuate Pasuk 2. Yeah. And state and change it to instead of she has fallen and will no longer rise, version of Israel, change it to she has fallen but will no longer rise up over to Israel. So, like they, oh, I don't know, she's fallen but, no, but uh, will no longer. Will no longer. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the easy answer, by the way, is that a Nivua for the bad can be overturned. Right, uh, so it's possible that this was the nubuah that was given, but but it was uh, overturned by our, by our tshuva. Okay, sorry on that one. All right, let's go back to the redak now. Um, now he's going to state the actual theme of the mizmor. Uh, one who contemplates the the uh, this mizmor. Yira bo niflaus haborit mishpat al bruav. Okay, so that's what he says. The the theory the theme is he will see the wonders of the creator and his. Judgments with his creations. I don't know exactly how to translate Mishpat up here. His judgments with his creations. <clears throat> and therefore, Chazal say, uh, that anyone who says Tila Ladavi three times each day is assured, is promised that he will be uh, a member of Olam Haba. And this is not just talking about someone who recites it verbally, right? Like all, like every kid thinks when he first hears this uh, Chazal. Yeah. Okay, so the, the, the key phrase here is that it is Yerebo Niflao Sabore Mishpato Al Bruav. I think I highlighted back when I was highlighting in my Torah Sklein before I stopped. Uh, the Meiri says something similar. Um, uh, just look at the Meiri there on the right. Zem is more Kulo Hoda'a, the Sipur Seder Hanhagaso Bemitsius. That one I actually like better. He's saying that it is all uh, you know, uh, praise slash thanks. And a, a recounting of the order of God's governance of existence. Yeah, that one I, uh, I like better. It's not contradictory necessarily, right. but you know the other thing also is like I don't see when it says, when Redux says niflaos, there are no supernatural niflaos mentioned in this explicitly. It's all like stuff that God does, right. you know, uh, uh, in nature. Yeah. Okay. That's like what we say in modem. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean niflaos have a whole? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, okay, so let's do the first uh, couple of psukim, okay, and then we'll we'll stop for today. The Amar Aromimcha Elo Kai Hamelach Aromimcha Belibi Uvilshoni. I will exalt him in my mind and with my tongue. So he does not just mean stating a, a, a statement of exaltedness. Sha'atahu uh, Hamelach Bamis, that you are the king in truth. V'chol Hamelachim Hamanhigim, all of the other, oh, we didn't notice this also, by the way, when we were doing the, the thematic uh, patterns. Melech is, oops, uh, is the theme of Malchus appears in that first Pasuk, HaMelech, oh, yeah. right? Um, and maybe one more place also, I guess we'll find out. Um, so he's saying that uh, you are the king in truth and all the other kings and rulers, Hataktoni Ba'alyonim, both the lower ones, that's humans, and the, uh, the Elyonim, that's presumably the stars and the, you know, the things that rule the earth. Tachas Mim they're under your dominion. The Ata Ramalehim, and you are... Uh, uh, exalted above them. So maybe what that means, maybe Arumimcha, when he says Ve'ata Ramalehim, maybe it does not just mean I will exalt you. It means I will like um, acknowledge your high status. Arumimcha, I will acknowledge your exaltedness. Right? Because if a Maki literally says Hamaki Romuso, uh, uh, one who recognizes his exaltedness, Yomar will say Elokai, my God, of all. He'll say OMG, okay. About who Elokai 
uh, sorry, Elokei Kol Basar, uh, Elokei Elohim. But he is the God of all flesh and the God of, of, uh, of powers. So what does he say? So he's addressing the question, why is he limiting it to my God? Uh, when in truth, really, he's the God of, of Kol Basar and everything. So what does he mean? Someone who recognizes God's exaltedness will say my God. Like, how's that? How's one flow from the other? In other words, I understand why he's the Radak has moved to say this, but what is uh, how does it fit the, the phrase my God? Like you would think that if you recognize God's exaltedness, that he rules over everything, you would you would use the universal term, you wouldn't use a personal term. So maybe you'd say, like, you personally like you recognize it in a day-to-day manner. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, I'll say an idea, but I, I feel I, I'm just, I suspect myself of artificially plugging this in. Okay, so the, um, the hold on, I actually think I have this on a PowerPoint. Give me a second. Uh, uh, Tefillah 101. So this is the famous, uh, well, it's only famous because Rebbe talks about it as Tefillah the, Shir. Um, the, uh, the question, Oh, this is not it. Hold on. Um, oh, Windows, Windows um, updated on my computer to Windows 11. What? And one of the things that I can't do is I used to be able to search and then right click and open file location. And now I can't do that. Oh. So uh, I used to know my way around uh, yeah, or be able to get what? there a shortcut. What happens when you search now? Uh, it, it'll give you the, opportunity, the uh, option of opening the file but not open, sorry, opening the, the the thing that you found, but not the entire file. It's, yeah. it's, it's bizarre. Uh, I think I know where it is though. Beer Tefila for the ninth grade. Sometimes you do control right click to give you more options. Okay, I'll try that. Um, okay, so. Oh uh, no, I, I, I don't. I guess I don't have it here. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll just say about Pat. So um, the 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 question. I don't know if it's a classic question or not, is why does it say in the first bracha, Eloke Abraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov? Why doesn't it just say, Eloke Abraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov? Oh, I know, I do have it. So I have Otsar, I have the original source. Otsar Hatfilos. Uh, the Hatfilos. See, uh, if I right, if I right click, it just says copy path. What do you say if I control click? Control right click. Control, oops, sorry. Oop, I just control click. All right, whatever, I'll try it later. Um, okay, so this is in Otsar Tefilos. I forgot what the, the author of this parish's name is. I think it's like Chaim Zundel or something like that. Some very uh, European sounding name. Uh, all right, now we just have to find where it is here. Okay, we're in Ritze. Okay, that's MSV at Siv. Suri Israel, closer. Okay, here we go. So this is a really, really bad text. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think I can find it. Oh my. Yeah, no one has redone the safer, by the way. It, it needs to be redone because it's such a good parish on tefillah. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness, there's a lot of stuff here. Hold on. Okay, here we go. Now we're in the actual Shimon Esrei. Okay, so it's the, in the ATO safe. He says, uh, Abraham. Yeah, he says like this. Um, so the question is, why does it say Eloke Avraham, Eloke Yitzchak, Eloke Yaakov, instead of just saying Eloke Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov, right? So he says, Masha Omrim Gimel Pa'amim Eloke, Halo Hayasagi B'Pa'amachas. You only need to do it once. Lomar Eloke Avraham Yitzchak Yaakov. Hu al derech shematzinu, da amar David lubino, b'divra hayamim, alef chafches pasuk tes, v'ata shlomo b'ni da es Eloke avichav avdehu. So David, in his charge to Shlomo, says, know the God of your father and serve him. But Perusha Pashut and the the uh, the Pashut shot, as people say, is that a person should not believe in God based on the tradition of his fathers. Okay. Kizem minhag ha ovde elilin or ha ovde ha not ovde elilin ha 
umas olam. Uh, that's the practice of the of, of the non-Jews, right? They they believe just because of tradition. Ella mitzad chatira al pitor sin hakdusha. Rather, you should believe in God based on on like you know uh, philosophical investigation guided by Torah, by the Holy Torah. Shuhu el habori isparach bis al shemal, which is towards the Creator, blessed and exalted is He. Lachain, and therefore, Amar das el keavicha mitzad hakira. Okay. What was it? I think it was kel habori. Uh, uh, Kel Habore, what are, Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Shu Kel Habore, yeah, 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 I think that fits better. Uh, therefore, he says, Da Eselke Avicha, know the God of your father, Mitzad Hachakira, that is by way of philosophical speculation. Umatsinu Bavraham, Shuhu Hayachoke Harishon, Elokuso. You find that Adam Harishon, oh, sorry, Avraham was the first one who investigated God. He's the one who made known God's uh, uh, divinity to the world. Because in his day, they worshiped the Ovdi Kochavim Mazalas. If we were to say, God of Avraham Yitzchak Miyakov, Hayisi Omer, I would have said, that Avraham investigated first. He investigated uh, God through speculation. They, and, and Yitzchak and Yaakov, his, his sons, relied on the belief of their father. Therefore, we say, we say, okay, by each one of them, to show that each one of them arrived at his own investigation. Uh, sorry, umata she'in echad el elokeinu, and found that the only uh, one is our God. Vehu chizuk emunasenu hakadosha, and this strengthens our emunah uh, kadosha, and that apparently is from the Shilas of Shuvos Panim Amiros. So I don't know who that is. So, what do you see from here? You see from here that if you investigate God, then we call him the God of you, mm. right? So. We call it Eloke Yitzchak because Yitzchak investigated God firsthand. Uh -huh. So maybe you can say from there, and again, I realize I'm just kind of transplanting this idea that maybe you could say that's what the Radak means, that one only one who recognizes God's greatness firsthand can say, my God. But if you don't recognize it firsthand, so then you can't say, my God, then that's just like the, you know, then you're just talking about God as a phenomenon. Right, right, right. Either way, it's a good idea, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Lolom uh, Ed. So I will exalt God forever. Shmecha, uh, your name. Shehu Kayam Lolom Ed. Oh, so is he reading the passage differently? Oh, so he's saying like, I think he's saying like this. Is he saying your name is forever? Not I will bless it forever. Shimcha, Shuhu Kaim Lolomved. So that's first reading. O Perusho, Ani Avarchehu Lolomved. Or you could do it the way we translated, I will bless him forever. Who call you Mechayai, which is all the days of my life. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, meaning not literally forever. Um, uh, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm smiling because I, on Sunday, we, we rewatched Tim Burton's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And and Charlie's grandpa said something about like forever. And Charlie said, it's not really forever, is it? And his mom says, uh, Charlie, sometimes when grown, uh, grown ups say forever, when they really mean just for a really long time, you know? <laughs> so like, like it's a hyperbole, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, um, oh, Perusha, or a third explanation. I will exalt him in this world. Right. So that makes it. Where's the only place you could praise God forever? In Olam Haba. Right. Let's finish the thing and then we'll go back and try to think about those three. First it says Arumimcha and then it says Shimcha. Oh, so now he's saying, why is it uh, I will pray, uh, exalt you? But I will bless your name. Why is an aromim shimcha and avar hekha? Right? Or, 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 you know, why doesn't he use shimcha for both of them or, or you for both of them? Yeah. Now the rock's going to say something which is going to sound heretical. Okay. Wait, what is it not true? It doesn't say. So the, 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 the object of the first one is God himself, and the object of the second half is God's name. 
So it, it should have said either the entire thing about God's name or the entire thing about God himself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, Ushimo, probably who? I just got to find where the Radak is on this large page. Ushimo who? Right. Okay. Uh, it's to show that he is his name and his name is him. And this is the name that is written but not read. Because the other ones are names of attributes. Let's just read the footnotes 14, 15, and 16. Um, 14 says, mm -hmm. Since we cannot grasp him, uh, we um, glorify his name. I remember seeing this uh, above. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I kind of want to save that for next time, but just to just give a basic idea here is that um, the only one of God's names that refers exclusively to his essence is the Shem HaMiyuchad, that's Yuke Vavke. So the, so what does it mean that he is his name and his name is him? Obviously God is not his name, but, but it's the only thing that the name is referring to him, God himself, right? So let's say Rahum is referring to how God acts. And it wouldn't be proper, appropriate to say that God's actions are synonymous with his whole essence. Mm -hmm. his, his actions are different, you know, but his, uh, his essence is, um, uh, is, uh, is only identified by that name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's just really go, let's go back. Oh, sorry. Let's just read this next one. It says, and repeats the same idea and says, So he's, I don't know why he's only going with the third one. So Chazal Darshan, um, each and every day, give him the blessings that are, uh, give him in accordance with his blessings uh, thematically. However you want to translate me in Birchosav. That's a drasha. We can do that next time also. Um, okay, so, so he's really saying that, that the first two psukim are one idea, uh, and, um, and there are three interpretations of the idea. So the first interpretation was, um, uh, was that um, his name is forever. So really, it's funny, he's reading it kind of like, with the asnachta in a different place, not the asnachta in a different place. He's saying, or sorry, no, he's really like, shimcha shehula You know, uh, and I will bless your eternal name. Right. right. Second reading is, uh, I will bless your name forever, and forever means my entire life. And then the third one is, I will bless your name for all eternity in olam haba. Right. So these are all good pratim. I mean, I, I I don't think that it's like a mach locus that we need to define in the sense of like, um, uh, you know, disagreeing with each other. But I guess the question is going to be, you know, when we read the rest of the first seven psukim that talk about praise of God, then um, is it going to be better to say that it's talking about olam hazeh? You know, in which case we would, I would be inclined to the second one, or is it going to be talking about Haba, which is the third one, or, or are we going to favor it giving you additional ideas about God's name? I mean, I, I don't know how far to go with this now, but yeah. Yeah. Well, we're saying he's just repeating himself. Yeah. Radak saying he's repeating himself in the first and second, which is why we noted that they are similar. It is like one chiastic puzzle, right, right. you know? <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay, so let's do this. Let's stop here for today. And then I would like to, I, I, on my own time, take a look at those uh, citations about Kihushmo Ushmo Hu, because that sounds like a deep idea that's important. Uh, and then if, they're if it's relevant, we could, we could do that. And then next time we'll, uh, we'll continue on the Nurda. Okay. Thank you for coming. And uh, thank you. Next time. Alrighty.